but God. Amen. He thought but he could God. stop it, but God. Hallelujah. He thought he could hinder it, but God. And so we thank God that we are moving, chuckling, chugging right along. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not going to belabor the time for those of you that are watching on Facebook, for those of you that are watching on Periscope. Um, we are going to get right into the word of the Lord. I thank God for those of you that are here with me. Um, I believe that um, I haven't had opportunity to uh, preach in a minute, so I don't know what's going to explode out of me. I've been getting a little bit of teaching in, and I was asking and praying and asking God and seeking which way he wanted me to go. And I'm just going to kind of piggyback on what I did yesterday. And we're going to go to Luke, the 17th chapter. Um, when you have the word, please stand for the reading of the word in honor of God's word. We want to reverence his word because his word is life. Amen. Amen. So uh, St. Luke, the 17th chapter, starting at verse 11, it says, As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. I want you to take note that it says, And as they went. So if they would have stayed where they were, they wouldn't have received what God had for them. But they had to operate in faith. When God said, go show yourself to the priest, they had to operate in faith and take the step to head towards the priest, even though they didn't see any change in their situation. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. That's very important. Remember, it was a Samaritan. And Jesus, Jesus asked, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? How has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Hallelujah. Father God, we give you the glory and the honor. We ask right now, Father, that you would begin to speak to your servant. Move Linda out of the way so that the people can hear what thus saith the Lord God. Lord, this is a very familiar patch, passage, not just to me, but to people that may be hearing it, Father. But let them see it with new eyes. Let them see it with new vision, God. Let them get a revelation that is going to keep them from this day forward, God. Let us begin to operate in the faith, believing and trusting you, that when you speak the word, it's already done. That when you say what you're going to say to us, Father, that we will believe enough to take that word and run with it, Father. Lord, I come against any spirits that will try to hinder and block and stop us from receiving what you have for us, God. Lord, we snatch out of the atmosphere everything that you have for us, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you the glory and the honor, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what I love about this scripture is that it says here, Jesus continued on towards Jerusalem. And what we understand that when you read this and when you start to recognize, you know that Jesus is going to Jerusalem for the Passion Week. This is right before Jesus is getting ready to give his life up to the cross. Hallelujah. This is when Jesus is about to fulfill the reason why he came. But the Bible says 
says he's on his way to Jerusalem. So we understand that Jerusalem for Jesus at this moment means death. So what it is saying is Jesus is on his way to die. But he says in the middle of Samaria and Galilee, there's a need that needs to be met. So what we, what God revealed to me when I was reading this and studying it and reading all the stuff that they were saying about this, because man couldn't find the specific place where Jesus healed these ten men. And so they wanted to say that since there is no specific place, it probably did not happen. It was probably something that someone made up, that it wasn't something that was there to give us understanding of who Jesus was. But what God showed me, hallelujah, was that he was in the place between life and death. And in the place between life and death, there is the kingdom of God. My God. Hallelujah. So in between Samaria and Galilee, that's why there's no specific place. Because wherever you are, in the middle of life and death, there is God. Hallelujah. Wherever you need him to show up, he shows up. And the Bible says he comes walking along. And there's a village there. And there are ten men. There's a community of men that are set aside and rejected. They can't come in where other people can go. They've got to go to this place and be on the sideline. They have to keep their distance because they're unclean. But one of the men, one of the men is even more rejected than the others because he's not a Jew. He's a Samaritan. He's a mixed breed. He's the person that they look down on. So even in the community of rejected beings, this man is even more rejected. Somebody's going to catch it in a minute. This man has issue because even the people that look like him, that's hurting like him, that's devastated like him, don't want to be around him. Hallelujah. And so Jesus, they cry out and they say, Jesus, have mercy. Let me back up. They say, Jesus, master. Have mercy on us. And what I found out, and it tickled me when I did, was that Luke was the only one that used this word, master. And then in the Greek, it's epitata, I think is how you say it. It's E-P-I-T-A-T-A. -T -A. It's epitata. He was saying that he was the only one, Luke's gospel, was the only one that said that Jesus was master. And what this meant was Jesus was the, God, the teacher of all things. He was the one that you display your honor to. He was the one that you adore. He was the one that brought truth to life. And so what we have here is that Luke was the only gospel to record this word master. But not only that, only the people that Luke said said master in this way were the disciples. And so what is this saying about the lepers? That when he penned this story or this account of the ten lepers, he said that they called Jesus the same master that Paul, that John, or Peter, that John and the disciples had called Jesus. That means that these lepers had an understanding of who Jesus was that was far above the understanding that he's just a healer. Oh, they knew that he was the one that they needed. Mm. We sang earlier, I need thee. Every hour of the day, I need thee. And they were saying, Jesus, if you can't help us, we can't be helped. Hallelujah. So they said, Master, have mercy. Why didn't they ask God to heal them of their leprosy? Why didn't they say, we need a healing? Mm. We just need you to touch us. We just need you to speak the word over our lives. But they ask God for mercy. I'm going to tell you why. Because in your situation, in your circumstance, you need God's mercy. You need God to show up in the place of life, in the place of between yeah. life and death. You need the mercy of God in the place between life and death. You need the grace of God in the place between life and death. You need God to show up and work the miraculous and do what no one else can do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So yeah, they knew they need they had leprosy and they needed that leprosy to be healed. They needed a healing touch from Jesus. 
But more than that, they needed life from Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. And so Jesus looks at him. He doesn't even take the time to walk over there. He just looks at him. He says, go show yourself to the priest. Now we understand back in Leviticus 14, that's what they were supposed to do. Because only the priest could tell you if you no longer had uh, leprosy. Only the priest could tell you if you were healed. Now leprosy is a disease on the body. And what it does is it eats at the skin, it eats at the limbs, and it becomes this destructive uh, disease that can't be, once you get it, it's very hard to get away from it. And it's very contagious. So if you are around somebody with leprosy and that person gets close enough to you, you can get leprosy. And so that's why they had to stand off at a distance. They couldn't get around other people. But if you notice, hmm, my God, I hear you, Jesus. If you notice, the lepers hung out with the lepers and they got close to one another. So let's say that this one had one form of leprosy and this one had another form of leprosy and this one didn't really have leprosy. It was just, you know, maybe a skin kind of tarnished. But because they were all in the same place and leprosy is contagious, it was spreading among them. So now I got your leprosy, you got my leprosy. And the one that didn't have, maybe didn't really have leprosy or had leprosy at the beginning, now has a worse condition of leprosy because they're because they're hanging out in that sinful place. Because they're hanging out. The Bible says it this way. Bad communication corrupts good manners. So you're hanging out with corruption. And now you're becoming even more corrupt. And God says, this is the end. Enough is enough. Come out. Go show yourself to the priest. Hallelujah. And so the lepers go. And the Bible says, remember I told you to take note of this. The Bible says, and as they went. So see, some of you, you're waiting for God to put the money in the bank. You're waiting for God to give you that yes, that green light. But God said, I said, go. I said, do. I said, I will be with you. I said that you can make it happen. I said that it's going to happen for you. So now what I need you to do is take a step towards what I said. Take a step. Because the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. And one, that same one that was dejected, that one that was kind of lagging behind because he knew that the others didn't really want him around, that one, he looked down and he saw, look, my skin, my skin is right. It looks good again. My skin, the coloring has come back. The life has come back into my skin. It's not this dewy, clammy, soupy looking thing. It, it, it's something in me has changed. And so because it's changed, he stopped when he's on his way to the priest and he went back to the high priest. <laughs> Woo, Lord. He went back to the high priest and he said, thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And King James, it says he fell at Jesus' feet and Jesus began to worship. And as he was worshiping, Jesus took an account he took notice of the situation. He said, look, did not I heal ten? Where are the other nine? Only this foreigner can come back and give God praise. See, sometimes God does stuff for us, but because we think that that's what God's supposed to do. He's supposed to bless me. He's supposed to give to me. The Bible says he shall meet my needs. That's what God's supposed to do. I don't have to give God praise. I don't have to give God thanks. I don't have to come back and say thank you, but God says, because you did this. Stand up, hallelujah. And notice what he says next. Go your way. He didn't tell him to get to the priest. The uh, priest don't have to tell you that you've been set free and delivered. I'm telling you now, stand up. Go your way, hallelujah. And in, the, in King James, it says, thy faith has made thee whole. So what that what that told me is that when God had me study this long time ago, what that told me was that this man huh, didn't just get healed, but this man was made whole. So that means if he lost the limb, if he had a missing eye, a missing nose, a missing finger, a missing toe, 
do of him being a broken man. No residue of him having leprosy. There was no need for him to 